Photography blog number two. Um, and for number two, uh, we're going to talk about this um, little Leica 2 camera. Um, and this is a bloody beautiful little camera. It is such a lovely, lovely little camera. I love it. Um, it's just bloody beautiful. It's made of solid brass, sheet brass. Um, this one is from 1932. It's a really, really early one. Um, and you, right, it's supposed to have black paint on it. Um, and you can see little bit, there's bits left of black paint on this one. There's a bit left on the bottom there. I don't know if you can see that. Um, but somebody during, excuse me, during his long life, has uh, taken off the black paint and left this brass underneath and uh, just have, just have a close look there at that that's that's just such a beautiful beautiful little camera made of solid sheet brass probably handmade i think loads of its parts were handmade at that time i think they still are at like a um it's, it's got the rangefinder on it for focusing uh, it's a beautiful little thing. I love it. Um, and it's tiny. This was the first, the Leica cameras were the first to use 35mm cinema film, which is this stuff. Um, and the engineering on this camera is just absolutely exquisite. This is how you undo it. You load the film here, undo that little thing there, undo that little clip and turn it. This is a German market one. I don't know if you can see there. It says Auf und zu, meaning open and closed. Well, zu mean, I think zu means two, but it, the, mean, you know, the meaning is closed. So we unlock it. That's locked. So we unlock it like that. And we just lift off this base plate and you can see that the engineering is such that this is still 80 odd years later 80 there's an 82 year old camera it's it's had a hell of a life as you can see it's been through the wars literally um and it is still a tight interference fit on the bottom there and that's all that keeps the light out is is the fit between this this little edge here this little edge here, the interior edge, and the rim of the camera there. That's all that keeps the light out, and it is still an interference fit light tight after all these years. That is that is precision engineering. Um, and that it still should be like that uh, 82 years later is an absolute miracle, frankly. Um, it's all mechanical, of course. That's what that's what the inside of it looks like. This is about as much as you can see of the inside of it. Um, there is a spool there, film spool. Yeah, we'll come to that later. I'll show you about loading it later on. Um, so I'll put that back. Notice there is an interference fit. It doesn't fall down. You've got to push it down. Still an interference fit after all these years. So we'll lock it and close the thing. Right, this is a really early one and you can tell that because it's got a little brass circle on the back, little brass plug in a hole on the body on the back there. Uh, and that is before, that is from the time, well, I, okay, this is my understanding of it. Um, the original Leica cameras, um, 
the Leica One. Uh, the film register wasn't standardised. The distance from the film plane to the to the focal plane wasn't standardised. Um, and so this hole, they cut a hole in the body uh, so it could be adjusted with the lens in place, the shutter open and the lens in place. Um, and so you can tell this is a really early one because it's used one of those very early bodies from a Leica 1 um, to make this, this model, which is actually a Leica 2. So if you see that on the back there, that's a very, very early model. Uh, it could even be, I don't know, it could even be a Leica 1 updated to a Leica 2, possibly. Um, and some of the very early Fed cameras also had this little plug on the back. Uh, as I understand it, they were an exact copy of the Leica 2. Um, so they have that as well, uh, which is a point to note on the early feds, but also a point to beware of, just in case somebody unscrupulous should try and pass off a fed uh, as a Leica. Um, another way you can tell this is a very early camera is because of this uh, shutter speed dial housing there, which is in, uh, it's, I think, colloquially called the lavatory seat, because it does, in fact, look a bit like a toilet seat. Uh, later ones were more angular. They had a sharp angle here and here, but this one is perfectly round, as you can see there. That's the lavatory seat one, so that's early. To use the Leica, it's beautiful. I mean, look how tiny it is. Right? First of all, that fits on the palm of my hand. I don't have very big hands. That fits on the palm of my hand with room to spare, about an inch to spare. That's how small it is. Um, I've got a fixed lens on here at the moment. There's a Russian lens, M39 lens, a Jupiter 8. Um, but, it, but you can put a collapsible lens on here, either a Leica one or an Indostar one. And then it collapses right down so you can get it really, really narrow. Uh, and stick it in your pocket. To use, this is simple. Uh, I mean, it can't get simpler. All this is, is a shutter um, with a lens which focuses an aperture and varying shutter speed. So that's all you've got. That's all there is to this camera. Shutter speed, aperture, focus. Um, so to use it, that's the wind on knob there, turn that, you've got your shutter speeds on there, I don't know if you can see that, yeah. one thing about this camera is, um, I know all the Barnack Leicas, which this is a Barnack one, designed by Oscar Barnack, um, you have to wind on the shutter before you change the shutter speed. Right, this one goes from 20th through 30th, 40th, 60th, 100th, 200th and 500th. That's its maximum shutter speed uh, which is on at the moment. We'll fire it. This is the sound it makes. It's actually quite loud. People say Leica shutters are silent. Um, this one I don't think it is that silent. I think it's I think it's a fair old click that's going on there. Yeah, that's one five hundredth. Mind it again to change the speed, just lift the dial and just carefully turn it and drop it into place. So let's take it to I don't know one thirtieth. Yeah. You can tell it's slower, you can hear it's a bit slower. But it, does, it definitely has a noise to it. Definitely has a fair old noise to it. Yeah. Um, it, I have heard it's better not to store the cameras with a low shutter speed set. So I usually try and store them with a high set on a high speed. That's on the highest speed, 500th. Um, the Z, you'll see a Z on there. If you get one of these, you'll see a Z on there. Uh, that means Zeit, which is a German word for time exposure. Still works on this camera. 
and uh, so on this camera, set it to Z, push the button, shutter opens, take your finger off the button, shutter closes. Yeah, so nice and simple, lovely arrangement. I'll take the lens off. Uh, you can see there's a screw thread there. Uh, that is the famous L39, or M39 I should say, like a thread mount, uh, mount for the lens. Uh, you'll sometimes see it called LTM, uh, or otherwise M39. Uh, that's the thread. Uh, in there you can see, I think you can, hope you can see, the shutter. So that's actually open now. You can see the base plate or the back plate. I'll let it go. And you can see the shutter move across. That shutter is made of cloth, rubberized cloth. Uh, I think in the case of the early Leicas like this one, it was made of silk. Um, and these early cameras are in my experience, um, better made, certainly the shutter curtains are better made than uh, the later ones. All the models up to probably about 38, 39. Uh, not surprisingly, uh, materials were in quite short supply uh, in Germany after 39. Uh, and as I understand it, um, the cameras weren't quite as well made after that. And even after the war, they weren't quite as well made. But these early ones really are little jewels. They are gems. They are genuinely beautiful, beautiful things. Um, they are proper Zen, in fact. If you want to put it in Xenography terms, whatever that means. Um, so there's the shutter fire at 1 500th. Beautiful. Good as the day it was made. Those curtains are in absolutely perfect condition. Absolutely perfect. 82 years old. That's quality. So we put the lens back on. In here, by the way, if you look there, you can see the rangefinder cam. That bit gets moved by the lens when it when you focus there's a bit on the lens that moves that cam in and out and changes what you see through here uh, the rangefinder windows I'll come to that in a moment but again this is another point to make sure you don't get a fake like uh, um, the feds or the Zorkies come to that have a wedge shaped rangefinder cam uh, the Leicas always have a circular rangefinder cam. Yeah, so you can see that, you'll see it's a wheel shape rather than a wedge shape, and it turns, if you move it, it turns. So it's a bit more nicely engineered, it's a bit better engineered than the Feds and the Zorkies. Doesn't seem to make much difference in practice actually, but it is nicer engineering. These can be a bit tricky to get back on. Don't cross that thread, whatever you do. Be very careful when you when you're getting that thread on there. Yeah. Right. So to focus the camera, what you do is you look through. You'll see there's two windows here. You look through this one, which is on the. Wait a minute. Yeah, it's on the left, right? As you look through the camera, it's the left-hand window, and you will see in there a split image. You probably can't see it through there. Maybe you can, I don't know. But you'll see a split image, and that split image, so supposing you're taking a shot of my hand there, what you would actually see is, is more fingers, a bit like that. Yeah, so when you turn the lens one way, the image splits and goes like that. You turn the lens the other way, it comes together 
and when it comes properly together like that you're absolutely in focus and yeah, that's a range finder and that was known as automatic focusing back in the day which is pretty cool um, nowadays of course it's it's uh, anything less you know it's nothing like automatic um, today you just push the button and you know you hear the electronic peep and there you go it's focused but but this was back in the day this was proper high tech and it's an amazing little bit of kit and it's built into a very little very tiny little house in there a tiny tiny little housing maybe half an inch high beautiful engineering there's a beam splitter in there there's all sorts of different ways the light goes uh, and it depends on the fact that the windows uh, are spaced apart, right? So there's one window you look through and there's another window you look through and it depends on the parallax of those two windows to actually focus and get the distance right. But it's brilliant and it's actually brilliant. It's far, 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 far better than just guessing the distance which you'd have to do with one of these cameras if you didn't have a range finder on it. So it's really nice. It's got a little shoe on top of here, a little accessory shoe, again made out of solid brass. Somebody's painted it matte black, I don't think it left the factory like that. Um, they were made, uh, uh, they were painted gloss black. All this lettering here was done in white. Um, but this one's clearly led a bit of a life. It's had its paint stripped, it's been painted in matte black, unless there were any that left the factory in, in matte black. I don't know. Maybe somebody can tell me about that if you know about that. I don't know. As far as I'm aware, they were all gloss black. Um, 1932 was quite a year in Germany, uh, in European history, in German history in particular. Uh, so this camera was made a year before Hitler came to power. So heaven knows the life it's led, all the things it's seen. Um, I hope it's not seen anything too horrible. But who knows, there were turbulent times. It's not the camera's fault. I don't know what kind of life it's had. I don't know what kind of things it's seen. I don't know what kind of photographs it's taken or even who owned it. Um, one thing's fairly sure, that it was owned by a wealthy sort of individual um, but who knows who owned it who knows who bought it new uh, we can only conjecture at the life that it's led and the hands that it's passed through and the things that it's seen and the photographs that it's taken um, but let's not dwell on anything too awful it might have been through it is it is in and of itself a very, very beautiful piece of engineering and a lovely camera and a lovely little antique. I love it. Very, very simple. Box, lens, shutter, aperture, light. <laughs> it really is It really is a very zen thing. You can't get much more simple than that in, in, in photography. Uh, actually, that's... Not true, you can get a lot simpler than that in photography. I do, to, I talk a lot of rubbish by the way, um, in amongst what I hope might be uh, sense. Um, you can get a lot simpler, of course, you know, simplest cameras are a pinhole camera, but this is nevertheless a very simple machine, especially in the light of today's technology. Um, and there's, there's, it makes you think about light. It makes you appreciate light. It makes you think about light. And you can only use this camera if you understand light. Um, and I, I often think that photography students that I meet from time to time, um, you know, you'll give them, a, give them an SLR like a Nikon or something and they'll turn it to auto and they're snapping away and... and uh, you can learn composition on it and it's it's it'll give you a lovely shot um but i think there's a lot to be said for 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 
using one of these kinds of cameras, not necessarily a Leica, but a camera like this, and really understanding what you're doing with light, because light is beautiful, light is... light is... Um, pure, beautiful, outside time. It's, it's such a wonderful thing to be able to manipulate and understand and know about. And this is pretty much as simple as it gets. Um, unless you're going for pinhole photography. Right, finally, how do you load this this little baby? Now, there's a lot of talk about these cameras being really difficult to load. Actually, I personally, I've never found them difficult to load. A bit tricky, but I certainly wouldn't use the word difficult. So I'm going to show you how I do it. This is how I load them. Um, Take off the bottom plate, lift up this beautifully machined little piece here, turn it, still as tight as the day it was made, lift it up, there's a little peg there, you have to make sure it comes off. And the thing about uh, loading a, a Barnack Leica is that you've got to make sure... Right. Hold on. You've got to make sure that, uh, first of all, that you pull out the leader to the right length. So that's about... That's about that length. I mean, you, can, you can measure it pretty easily. By doing that. Yeah, so that's the length of film you want from one side of the camera to the other. You don't have to be absolutely precise about it but that's the length of the leader you want. I'm going to tuck it around the spool on this side here um, and it fits across the length, the width of the camera. Right, so let's just put the body down for a minute and then what I do is very simply um, you can see that there is a bit of the lead has already been trimmed there that's how the film comes um, what we're going to do is we're going to extend that along here up to about that point there which is just about two one and a half or two perforations out of the film roll right so it's it's that simple it really is that simple, so I hold it like this. Line up the scissors against the level of your leader that's already cut. Chop, chop, chop. And then when we get to this point here, we go upwards, turn upwards like that, making sure that we don't leave any half perforations. That's really important because that can catch the shutter. Right, so we've cut that. Can you see that? Now there will be probably a sharp point on there, on that, that little end there. So we'll just, all we'll do is we'll just very carefully cut that off. Yeah, so there we've got a nice rounded corner. And very importantly, we've got, we've not, We've got a complete perforation there, is what I'm trying to say. One complete perforation, uh, and we've not cut into it. If you cut into it, you'll leave a you'll leave a spike and a burr, which could catch the shutter. That's what we've got to be careful about. So then, take your camera body, and it's going to go in that way up. Is it? Wait a minute. Bloody hell. No, it's going to go in that way up. All right, it goes in that way up. Yeah, like that. That's the body, it goes in like that. So we're going to put that there. Make sure we've got enough there. All right, so then we take out the spool. And what we do is we just wrap that. under this edge here like that with the emulsion side facing out push it 
push it as far as it'll go, make sure it's flat against that flange there. Yeah, so that when it winds, it's not going to wind in a spiral, it's going to wind nice and level. Right? It's actually bent that spool slightly. That flange is slightly out of true, but it doesn't seem to make much difference. Yeah, so in, in the camera, as you wind the film on, it's going to do that. So now all we do is, we take our camera, our film and our spool, and I need, really need three hands to do this. And you've got to get your film behind the shutter there. Yeah, so between the back wall of the camera and the, the crate, the shutter crate there. So it's quite a narrow gap. So we're going to put the film down there, like that, slide it down, let me just have a look, yeah, so we slide it down, like that, and we just bring them down together, and pop, there it goes. Put on the base plate, clip, put the peg, clip over the peg, lever it down, nice and carefully because it's still a tight fit. Turn, unlock, and we're done. Nice and easy. So, take off our lens cap, you see that's a Nice big F2 Jupiter 8, it's a beautiful lens. Like a purists will recoil in horror, no doubt, but I love the Jupiter 8. It's a lovely little lens, I use it a lot. Um, it's beautiful. So all we do now is, um, there, there's a bit of exposed film in the camera, so we just turn that dial, not the dial, we turn the wind on. Fire off one frame, and we're ready to go. They do say you should fire off two frames, but I only usually fire off one. And that's it. That is the Leica 2 loaded up and ready to go. And it's a most beautiful object. Very, very simple photography. Um, and there we are. Um, so next time what we're going to be looking at is uh, some more of the rangefinder cameras. Um, we'll look a little bit at the Leica 3, we'll look at um, the uh, Zorki 4 and the Fed 4 and we'll, we'll have a look at them and compare them. Um, we can also, uh, also have a look at um, a Canon 110 rangefinder which uh, is very unusual, quite, quite a late rangefinder camera using the 110 film format, but for now, uh, a happy xenography, whatever that is.